Hello and welcome. I'm Ram Otalabo and you're watching Rappler Talk. The Philippine National Police has a problem from within. It's scalawag cops, it's rogue cops, it's so-called rotten eggs. Uh, for the first time, the Philippine National Police has partnered with the Ateneo School of Government to actually find out what makes a cop bad and also what makes a cop good. Today in Rappler Talk, we're speaking with Ms. Ariza Francisco, a Deputy Director for the Ateneo Policy Center under the Ateneo School of Government, one of the co-authors of the study. study yes. Thank you so much for being here, Ariza. Thank you for having us. Okay, so talk to us about the study. What did you do and what did you find out? Okay, so as you mentioned, the study that was conducted by the Ateneo School of Government really aims to answer the question, what makes good cops in the Philippine National Police? So we wanted to examine what are the factors that predict or results to strong performance as well as bad performance among our police force. Mm -hmm. So here, what we did is really to look at both the individual level and the environmental um, level in terms of what affects mm -hmm. um, our police um, and their leadership and performance. So we mainly looked at four different factors. So first, uh, personality traits. So yeah. what are the characteristics innate to these police officers? Mm -hmm. Sec third is their professional history. So okay. what kind of experience inside PNT mm -hmm. has shaped them? So either these are the assignments that they've went through, the trainings that they received, and lastly, it's the organizational culture. So mm -hmm. we're looking at what kind of environment influences their performance. Mm -hmm. So for this study, we had both quantitative and qualitative parts. Mm -hmm. So qualitative, we conducted pen and paper personality tests, mm -hmm. organizational culture tests. Mm -hmm. We looked at their demographic profile and um, aligned it to their personal data sheets. Mm -hmm. And in the qualitative part, we conducted a numerous focus group discussions to be able to dig deeper to whatever the statistics or the survey results are telling us. Mm -hmm. So for the study, we had about 479 police officers mm -hmm. joined, mm -hmm. and they're part of the National Capital Region Police Office. Mm -hmm. So why did we start with National Capital Region? Because as you know, there is a concentration of the cases um, in, in terms of the, the background or the composition of the NCR regional office or this, this um, specific district, there is a concentration of cases, mm -hmm. concentration of um, high profile cases, then high profile cases complaints, against cop, against complaints against cops, even um, the public perception mm -hmm. or what is typically um, covered by the media, mm -hmm. it's concentrated in this yeah. in this region. So we felt that it is important to start with NCR. Mm -hmm. So given the number of the, the police officers that we have included in the study, it is safe to, it is generalizable, at least the results is generalizable to Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. And we got officers that we tagged as strong performers. Mm -hmm. So these are officers who have received awards and who do not have cases. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we studied the poor performing officers, or these are the officers who have received cases, mm -hmm. both administrative and grave offenses, mm -hmm. but do not have um, awards, as you may say. Okay, so for each factors that you mm -hmm. studied, what were the indicators and what did you find out? Ano yung mga factors talaga mm -hmm. na nagpapaganda, nagpapaayos sa isang mm -hmm. police? So, siguro let's start with demographics. Mm -hmm. So, their background. So, we looked at age. Mm -hmm. Um, educational attainment, sex, marital status, number of children, mm -hmm. religion, and the province where they originated. And really what we found out is it's age and educational attainment. So the older they are and the higher the educational attainment, it is correlated to stronger performance in the force. So what it tells us is that there is really premium to experience mm -hmm. um, that helps us, that helps them in terms of their performance and that poor performance is actually um, put into the burden of younger officers who do not have the experience or the education as influential factors yet. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and we also saw that, um, for example, religion, mm -hmm. whether you are Roman Catholic, you're Christian, or you are um, Muslim, it does not have um, significant um, predictive power in terms of performance. Bale, hindi dapat tayo nagdi-discriminate sa policeman kung Muslim man siya, Christiano. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But actually, when we did the focus group discussions, mm -hmm. it showed that it's not so much about religion, but it's about spirituality. Mm -hmm. So our officers were saying that the squad concept, mm -hmm. where they focus more on spiritual formation, helped them. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much what type of religion mm -hmm. um, they they are part of, mm -hmm. but more of um, how they practice their spirituality. And they also even mentioned that they believe, mm -hmm. the officers themselves believe, that an ideal officer is God-fearing. Mm -hmm. In terms of province um, where they originated, it's also not significant mm -hmm. whether they're from Manila or where they're from mm -hmm. um, other provinces. Mm -hmm. um, so that's in terms of the demographic profile. Mm -hmm. we, we also looked at gender, gender. and actually um, because PNP, as you know, is a male-dominated area, yes, yes. what we found is male officers are more associated to poorer performance. Mm -hmm. So in a male-dominated industry organization, the tendency is that when you exhibit hypermasculine values, it also shows in various literature internationally that it results to more citizen rudeness, mm -hmm. more complaints from the public, mm -hmm. and even use of more force. Ano tong mga manifestation ng hypermasculine behavior for policemen on the ground sa Tulumalabas? Yun. So as, as mentioned, how they deal with, with um, cases or, or the citizens. So mm -hmm. There's more rudeness mm -hmm. in terms of the interaction. Um, it is shown in various literature that they tend to use more force mm -hmm. compared to female counterparts, mm -hmm. um, and that um, it it actually results to more complaints from the public. Kasi parang mas maangas sila, tapos mm -hmm. parang mas konti yung inhibition. Yes. Okay. So I think one of the actions that um, General Archie mentioned in 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 the last uh, in the launch of the study is mm. that they're looking into experimenting an all female um, mm. unit. So it has been started in Sikihor mm -hmm. with the Mariam Police um, initiative. So now I think there there is. Um, an interest in starting this kind of experiments in various districts to see if having more female in the force would um, would be helpful in terms of performance in the PNP. Because right now, the mandate is only to have 10% mm -hmm. of the force to be female. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's it's something to be looked at. Actually, pati sa top um, level ng PNP, walang female general. Mm -hmm. As in, sa command group. Oh, sa command group, pinakamataas mm -hmm. sa kanila na female is mm -hmm. usually colonel sila at naiipon mm -hmm. sila as colonels tapos naiskip sila. Pati also, mm -hmm. it's important, I think, to point out that the PNP really has a history. Mm -hmm. Kasi di ba, all male, lagi yung mm -hmm. PMA. Yes. Tapos yung PNPA mm -hmm. din, recently lang siya naging all female. So, mm -hmm. konti talaga yung pag-angat para sa mga women sa PNP. Pero, magandang merong mga initiative ngayon. Mm -hmm. Ano pa bang ibang parts sa demographic? Um, so, that's it for demographic. Um, for personality. personality. So, now, their characteristics. It's very interesting because what we found is that um, the traits that result to performance are more <coughs> intrinsic. So, these are officers who are intrinsic intrinsically driven and are independent. So, these are, they, they showcase um, characteristics where they are firm understands mm -hmm. they don't get easily swayed mm -hmm. or influenced by others yes and actually they prefer working individually rather than in teams mm -hmm. and for us that's interesting because it shows that in, in an environment where there are a lot of external influences especially in terms of corruption etc I think one form of coping mechanism that they have adopted especially for the good cops is that they tend to just rely on themselves. Isolate. Yes, uh -huh. yes. So that, um, you know, they're independent, they stick to their principles. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's, that's important um, to look at in terms of what kind of people do we bring in into the police force. Mm -hmm. bang ibang studies, halimbawa, sa ibang uh, fields mm -hmm. from your scanning of related mm -hmm. literature? Is it the same for like other industries that talagang people sometimes isolate and they thrive when they just depend on themselves? I think it really differs per industry. Uh -huh. There are industries where um, 
it's really needed to work in teams. But I, but I think um, in terms specifically in the context of PNP, where there are various um, influences, I think in order for our stronger cops or good cops to um, not get involved mm -hmm. in in questionable practices, questionable practices, they tend to stick to tried and tested methods, stick to um, their own opinions, mm -hmm. and work um, within themselves. Pali ko nakakakita sila ng mm -mm. corruption o pagkakamali ng mga kasama mm -mm. nila, umiiwas na lang sila. Kasi mm -mm. Mal malaki rin talaga yung factor na peer pressure. No? Mm -mm. Kasi yun, squad yes. mentality, it's also something that we have in Filipino culture. May katropa mm -mm. tayo, di ba? Mm -mm. Kung may mga kaibigan tayong ginagawa mm -mm. yung mali, ang hirap rin na humindi, no? Mm -mm. Kailangan talagang lumayo ka na lang at humindi. So, nakikita rin sa polis. Mm -hmm. Ano pa yung mga nakita natin? Uh, in terms naman of professional history or mm -hmm. their experience in the PNP that helped them, mm -hmm. we found that having more assignments mm -hmm. resulted to better performance. So, uh -huh. the more that they are transferred from one assignment or district to another, um, they tend to exhibit better performance. So, uh -huh. I think in terms of governance perspective, this really coheres with the long-standing policy to encourage rotations. Uh -huh. So when, when we speak of rotations, it's really because um, it prevents our officers from being captured mm -hmm. by, for example, corrupt transactions, that, whose risk is increased with more familiarity in a particular assignment. Tama ba ano? Every two years, no? Dapat iniikot sila. I, I, I think so. Um, Kasi di ba parang ano, tumatagal daw mm -mm. sila, nagpla-plot ng roots of mm -mm. corruption, relations, mm -mm. nagiging complacent. Yeah, and, and rotations is not just to prevent over-familiarization, but it also actually helps expand their experience. Mm -hmm. So they're able to gain new knowledge in terms of the other um, assignments that they um, get mm -hmm. and in terms of number of assignments it's really um, looking at number one the nature of job um, so in in our focus group discussions a lot of them mentioned that there are certain types of assignments in PNP who are really prone mm -hmm. to I guess bad um, bad influences ano to? so ito ba yung parang HPG? Ano? ito yung mga operatives ah, mga the ones operatives. who are really on the ground mm -hmm. so they deal with people and, and, and especially when they handle um, sensitive cases, mm -hmm. there's a lot of like influences that they that they get. So when they were mentioning that when you actually try to compare those who are on the ground and those who are in the office, the tendency is that the ones assigned as operatives tend to get more cases. Kasi parang mas may, may possibility of corruption mm -hmm. kasi maraming bibigyan mm -hmm. ng pera, mm -hmm. pero tumatawag na politiko, di ba? Yeah. And actually, even if you're a good operative, let's say, um, dami mong nahuli, mm -hmm. that means you also have a lot of court cases to attend. Mm -hmm. And they mentioned that they need a lot of legal assistance in this area because if you shoulder job-related expenses by going through these court cases, the tendency is that you are more tempted to to engage in um, corrupt practices to be able to make up for your out-of-pocket expenses. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's a lot to be looked at in terms of what assignments mm -hmm. um, these officers get. At the same time, what district they are assigned to. So. In, in the study, we look at six districts. So the QCPD, Manila Police District, Eastern, Southern, Northern, and the Regional Office of NCRPO. So there are also some districts that are more prone to poorer performance. Alin daw yung parang desirable assignment at saka alin daw yung parang doon nagkakaproblema yung mga police? Um, in, in terms of um, ano yung parang ayaw nilang assignment at saan nagkakaproblema sila? Uh, I, I think, like as mentioned, yun niya, the more that they, they directly work on cases, uh -huh, uh -huh. the more that you know, they get pressure not just from um, the, the citizens that they interact with, but even with local governments, etc. Et Pero wala naman parang sinasabi na, okay, sa NPD ayaw ko dyan. Okay, sa SPD gusto ko dyan. Uh, wa NPD. Wala naman silang minention na uh -huh. um, but but I guess um, in, in terms of the study, we, we saw that there are um, 
specific districts that are more prone to um, poor performance. And I think it's something for PNP to look at and to partner with the local government counterpart mm -hmm. to ensure that um, they can address these. Kasi nga, di ba, yung police din talaga, galing din talaga yung um, sometimes their pocket money from politicians and mm -hmm. may partnerships talaga sila sa kanilang LGU. Mm -hmm. And there are cases wherein the chief of police isn't exactly in good terms with the mayor. Mm -hmm. Kaya hindi nagkakaroon ng yeah. magandang um, supply mm -hmm. for the PNP. Tapos, um, could you describe to me um, from these findings, mm -hmm. ano lumalabas na mga good performing cops? What does he look like? What does she look like? So, good performing cops um, in the PNP. So, as mentioned, so these are, I think, more than being equipped with the technical and operational skills of being a police, what's emerging is really the leadership qualities needed to become a good policeman. So we saw na all of the police officers, they undergo technical skills training, but it is those who undergo managerial skills training, the ones related to leadership, the ones related to values, they're the ones who perform better. So what we see is that really there are two things. One is leadership, mm -hmm. the leadership qualities that they possess both prior to joining PNP, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the one that develop inside the institution. And second is that these officers are part of a good influencing environment. So this is what we call the subcultures. Mm -hmm. Magandang mm -hmm. na nabanggit mo na yung subcultures. Parang mm -hmm. anlaking bahagi talaga nung inyong study yung mm -hmm. subcultures, right? Could you just explain to us what these subcultures are and mm -hmm. what were the good and bad subcultures you found from mm -hmm. speaking with them? Yes, yeah, so really when we looked at the organ organizational culture, there are two parts. So mm -hmm. one is your formal one. Mm -hmm. So this is your vision mission, their processes, yeah. so what is written. But the more important thing to look at, it's what, what is prevailing. Mm -hmm. So what is really adapted by the officers, what's in their common practice, and this is what we have determined as subculture. So how the groups or the factions have, in a way, coped with the formal organizational culture. Mm -hmm. So what we saw is that there are good subcultures and there are bad subcultures. So the two main or opposing subcultures that have emerge or have been constantly referenced is number one the my brother's keeper or squad concept could you explain that to us yeah so my brother's keeper the idea or squad concept the idea is that um you're part of a squad and that um the younger officers or brothers are guided by squad leaders or their seniors who are called keepers mm -hmm. so there are also life coaches who help them in terms of um, you know, their own personal challenges, their spiritual formation, mm -hmm. even their family problems to ensure that they look after the welfare of one another. Mm -hmm. So this one, they mentioned that this kind of um, environment created a good subculture mm -hmm. where they know that they have a support in terms of how they navigate through the rigors of the job. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, they determined that there is a similar kind of setup like that, which they called Bata Bata system. Mm -hmm. So this one, it's more of a senior officer, also guides a younger officer. And before, it is a positive thing for them. Mm -hmm. It created a sense of trust and loyalty. Yeah. But now, they believe that it has been abused and that it has been used for, it has, it has been breeding patronage and at the same time been using for personal gains such as protection mm -hmm. or promotion. So, mm -hmm. para hindi ka ma madali, kumbaga, yung mm -hmm. senior mo, papatektahan ka. Palagang or ka. for promotion, may palakasan. Mm -hmm. and, and we see that these two subcultures, it really emerges that what is needed for PNP is to not just look at the bigger, lofty ideals of what PNP is or what the organization is about as their culture, but really to look at deeper the interactions of their officers. Mm -hmm. So what are the good subcultures that they can elevate mm -hmm. and further strengthen, such as the squad system, mm -hmm. and what are the ones that they have to address, such as the bata-bata system. It's interesting because even in the national headquarters, mm -hmm. there's still the bata-bata system. And my brother's keeper, mm -hmm. up to the general's level. Mm -hmm. 
from what I understand from speaking with them, itong my brother's keeper meron siyang spirituality aspect, mm -hmm. meron siyang religiosity mm -hmm. aspect, may prayer spirits nila. Mm -hmm. Samantalang itong bata-bata system naman is very informal. They can mm -hmm. actually, halimbawa, iinom sila or magpaparty mm -hmm. sila or sasamahan yung isang tao dito. And mm -hmm. uh, um, is, can they both coexist at the same time? As in, pwede bang may very brother's mm -hmm. keeper itong isa? Tapos at the same time, bata rin siya nitong isang general. May ganun ba kayo nakita? Mm -hmm. Um, I think in in essence, the man the bata bata system, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. It's just that if it is used for personal gains, mm -hmm. such as promotion and protection, mm -hmm. which in some ways, if they cross lines, then that's when it becomes bad. So mm -hmm. I think it is possible that bata ka na isang tao to, but it's a healthy relationship, mm -hmm. and then you're also part of a spiritual squad. Mm -hmm then it is possible. Basta walang abuse dito sa mm -hmm. relationship to mga to. Kasi, di ba lumalabas din sa mga internal complaints sa PNP mm -hmm. at kahit dun sa ano, biggest controversy is, latest controversy sa PNP mm -hmm. is yung kay former PNP Chief Art, um, um, Albayalde, yeah. Oscar Albayalde, who apparently had bata, yung mga mm -hmm. sinibak na mga pampanga mm -hmm. policemen na supposedly hinarang niya yung mm -hmm. pagkasibak. Pagka so may mga ganun ding kaso na dapat mm -hmm umiiwas yung polis mm -hmm. na kahit may relationship sila dapat tandaan nila na hindi dahil magkaibigan kayo mm -hmm. sisirahin niyo yung batas at saka hindi niyo susundan yung um inyong protocols mm -hmm. di ba um ito na mga ano interesting sa akin yung sinabi mo na merong coping mechanisms mm -hmm. kung ano to over sobrang taas ng kanilang cases mm -hmm. na hawak ano pa yung ibang ways at saka ibang cases wherein they cope and it mm -hmm. leads them to corruption mm -hmm. Kasi it's a slow mm -mm. process, di ba? Hindi yeah. siya yung tipo, okay, I want to be corrupt today. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. May pressure sila slowly. Mm -mm. Tapos ginagawa na pala nila. Yeah. And, and actually, we see those coping, coping mechanisms applied when they're dealing with the rigidities of the system of PNP. So, mm -hmm. for example, if high-performing cop ka nga, ang dami mong cases, kanya, and you have to go to all of these um, court, court appearances, mm -hmm. pero if you're not able to attend for example, a flag ceremony or some specific training, you automatically get an administrative case. Mm -hmm. So the tendency is that the officers, they would rather not have that many cases mm -hmm. so that they don't get, ad parang they're able to manage their time well. Mm -hmm. May ipit kasi sila sa mm -hmm. ibang part ng kanilang buhay. Oh, oh, mm -hmm. yun. So parang I, think, I think those rigidities um, have to be revisited in order to be more pragmatic and responsive mm -hmm. to the natures of the job now. But mm -hmm. you sa study niyo right na kung mas marami anak, mas nahirapan mm -hmm. sila kasi kailangan nilang mas marami yeah. oras sa bahay at saka mm -hmm. kasawa tapos... they have heavier responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, parang ang lumalabas dito for me is kitang-kita na we really are undermanned itong NCRP mm -hmm. I mean, kita din naman ng police, mm -hmm. they're really aggressively recruiting, pero mm -hmm. because of this Ang rigid, rigid pa rin. And uh, the NCRPO, from what I remember, is still on full alert. Mm -hmm. So that means yung kanilang shift is not yes. really 8 hours a day, but 12. 12, 12 so, hours. Dire Diretso, 12 mm -hmm. hours. So that's 60 hour work. Mm -hmm. Hindi, even 7 day work week sila minsan, mm -hmm. right? So may ipit talaga yung mga mm -hmm. polis. Kaya minsan hindi rin siya totally mm -hmm. their fault. Meron mm -hmm. din talagang part from the system. Na needs to be changed mm -hmm. in order to support them to perform better. Mm -hmm. That's true. And another part that I wanted to discuss, and you actually found this, is also yung public perception. Mm -hmm. Ano sinasabi nila? What, how does it affect them? I think especially for high, highly urbanized areas such as Metro Manila, mm -hmm. how they perceived it is that mababa daw yung tingin sa mga police ng, mm -hmm. ng mga residents or constituencies dito. Mm -hmm. So for them, that actually results to lower morale mm -hmm. and lower confidence for our police force, mm -hmm. which in turn for them kind of hinders them in really performing to their best. And at the same time, you know, they're, they're, they're exerting, they're trying to exert their authority mm -hmm. in terms of um, in terms of that. And it does not sometimes result positively. So, for mm -hmm. example, they're saying na may maximum tolerance naman. Mm -hmm. So, kunyari, kapag tinitreat sila not fairly by the people, maximum tolerance. Pero there's only up to a certain extent that they can, 
they can really take mm-hmm. or yung patience nila sometimes it really goes over na yeah. and that there is the result to exerting mm-hmm. force for Uh-oh. example and and we really believe that public perception in terms of um, the trust or the confidence that they put in the PNP is needed in terms of effective policing mm-hmm. so if people do not see the police as a partner in terms of promoting security, peace, and order mm-hmm. in, in our community, then they're not going to go to the police mm-hmm. if there's something that goes wrong. And mm-hmm. that, that kind of um, siguro relationship is needed so that the police can, number one, perform better, but at the same time, you know, para have that um, pride mm-hmm. in terms of the job that they have. How do you how do you gauge your kanilang public perception? Is it primarily through speaking with the people who mm-hmm. go to them, social media, mm-hmm. and having social media accounts mm-hmm. on PNP, and also news ba mm-hmm. at yung ayon popular yung ang probinsya na how mm-hmm. so how do they actually get this Present. image of themselves? Mm-hmm. How do they form it? I think for the individuals, it's really what is apparent in terms of their interactions with the people, mm-hmm. and second is how the see the police being framed in the media mm-hmm. yeah. so media talaga mm-hmm. kaya lagi nga nilang sinasabi we're friends from the media mm-hmm. punta naman tayo sa recommendations nyo mm-hmm. so from all of these findings mm-hmm. anong na-recommend nyo sa PNP? so we recommended um, a top down bottom up approach mm-hmm. so we we have recommendations in terms of the organization but also in terms of the individual mm-hmm. so in terms of the organization as mentioned what we want that um, to recommend to PNP is to identify what are the rigidities of their current culture mm-hmm. that needs to be revisited so that it can properly respond and be more practical mm-hmm. for the police force but at the same time to identify what are the budding subcultures mm-hmm. so the good ones and the bad ones so that they can properly address them so for the bad ones how do you stop this kind of bad subculture that is growing in your organization and at the same time for the good ones how do you incentivize this how do you further institutionalize how do you root these practices in the organization so kung kung maganda yung ginagawa na isang district how do you recognize that and adopt it to other districts for example and in terms of the individual we're really looking at strategic human resources so what this entail is number one to go deeper in terms of analyzing the recruitment and selection policies of PNP. So as mentioned, you may mga leadership qualities or may mga training that ideally they have gotten prior to entering PNP. Because yes. when they enter, they're not a blank slate. Eh. Yeah. They, they come with their experience na and their past. Yeah. So how do we ensure that when they apply to PNP, they're properly prepared for the rigors of the service? So. Mm-hmm. In terms of recruitment and policies, we're really looking at how do we involve more collaboration with with the suppliers of our police force. Mm-hmm. So but it's not just PNPA, but also the schools and uh-huh. other criminology colleges. Yeah, yeah. And apart from recruitment and selection, we also wanted to look at more the training that they get. Mm-hmm. So now that they're in PNP, what kind of support yeah, and training can we give them to continuously support good performance? Ito yung tinatawag nilang schooling na kailangan mm-hmm. nila mag-training muna bago yeah. ma-promote sila. Mm-hmm. Required kung gusto nila maging yeah. specialized, right? Yeah. And, and meron din kayong findings, di ba, na yung merong mga colleges who don't necessarily mm-hmm. produce good cops. Could you just talk about that a bit? So, at least for the list of NCRPO officers that we have gotten, we cross-reference from which schools, what are the top schools, where they came from, and in terms of per school, how many percentage of what they've produced are strong cops or poor performing cops. Mm-hmm. And from there, we saw that there are schools that have produced all good cops, mm-hmm. there are schools that have more good cops, but a, a, a bit of like bad cops, mm-hmm. but there are also other schools that have produced more poor performing than good performing. And I think really what this asks us is how can PNP reach out to these schools so that we can improve, I guess, the program that they 
they give and we can better align it to what kind of officers or recruits they are looking for. So, dapat ka usap palagi ng PNP mm -hmm. to mga colleges kasi mm -hmm. this is really beyond the PNP. Mm -hmm. Ano pa yung recommendations ko? Yan. So, um, in terms of recruitment and selection, we actually recommended to form a bigger academic consortium. Mm -hmm. So, this is something that we, that we in the academia, we can actually directly contribute to. So, in partnership maybe with CHED and this colleges and criminology schools mm -hmm. and PNPA, we can we can scan um, the educational programs that are currently existing mm -hmm. and what can be improved in terms of those educational programs. Anong itsura nitong academic consortium? Like, mm -hmm. Has this been done before? Has this been done in other countries? Mm -hmm. If we're going to do it here, what would it look like? How mm -hmm. regular will it meet and mm -hmm. what will happen? So I think really it starts with convening mm -hmm. um, these schools, so sending those invitations. And in that um, siguro first meeting, it's discussing the current state of educational system mm -hmm. that feeds into our Philippine National Police. Mm -hmm. And from there, then we can plot, I guess, certain steps mm -hmm. um, that needs to be further reviewed. So. Um, ideally, the end of it is a recommendation of what is an effective training program for the police. Tapos, di ba nag-arrive kayo from these recommendations? You have Project Taro. Mm -hmm. Could you explain to us what was agreed on and how did the PNP decide on this? Mm -hmm. So, Project Tarong um, is the response of the PNP, mm -hmm. informed in part by our study, and the idea Tarong. As they mentioned, it comes from the Visayan word, mm -hmm. which uh, means discipline or to behave. Mm -hmm. And the root word is katarungan. Uh -huh. So what they're looking at here is that it really is a project that aims to start the reform from within, mm -hmm. from the individual. So how can they better improve discipline amongst the, um, amongst the officers? Yeah. So it they wanted to target it from a holistic ecosystem based um, reform so there is an aspect of moral physical and um, spiritual so in terms of moral it really goes into their revitalized internal cleansing program so they've been really active in terms of um, going over the cases that are now pending in, in PNP, mm -hmm. um, dismissing officers who are um, entangled in corruption, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et and then in terms of physical, they're actually targeting uh, a BMI initiative or body mm -hmm. mass index. So this is a weight loss initiative for the PNP. You want to papayat the generals and policemen? Um, mm -hmm. Actually, limo din in our FGDA that some of them were saying maybe the trainings now are not as rigorous as as observed in terms of the physical wellness mm -hmm. of the officers now. So it's I think it's not just about physical fitness, but it's also a symbol of discipline. Mm -hmm. kung police ka, kailangan you're able to act quick on the job. Eh? Yeah. Um, so that's the physical part. And lastly is spiritual. So mm -hmm. this is where the interfaith squad system or my brother's keeper comes in. So mm -hmm. how do they get that community where they're able to practice more um, values formation and spiritual formation. Mm -hmm. So Project Tarong is really laid out to, first at least the, the initial steps that they laid out, these are low-hanging fruits. Mm -hmm. These are actions that they already established the foundations and they saw that this, this at least um, informed by this study, is part of the aspects that contribute to good performance, so they're trying to strengthen it. Mm -hmm. But in the long term, what we have recommended is, number one, to, to create that academic consortium for recruitment and selection improvements in the PNP. And mm -hmm. second is to develop a competency-based mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. framework or yeah. system. So when we talk about competency-based training um, for the PNP, I think it really looks at both intrinsic and extrinsic aspect. Eh. Mm -hmm. And right now, in terms of their training, it's more heavily focused on technical skills. Yeah. But what the research has found is 
it's really a lot of values and leadership and mm. personal characteristics. These things don't get discussed enough. Mm -mm. Yeah. So I think that's what we want, that's what we envision. That mm. per level or rank in the PNP, you're able to concretely determine what are the aspects or, mm. or areas that needs to be developed. So for mm -hmm. example, if you're a patrolman, um, you should be able to handle stakeholders in the community. Mm -hmm. If you're, let's say, a general or a, a district district chief, you're able to handle relations with the local government. Mm -hmm. there, there, there are levels in terms of what needs to be mm -hmm. trained um, for our officers. Okay. So itong Project Tarong is, well, I guess, what's... What's ha what has to be discussed now is how Project Tarong also has limits of its own because it's mm -hmm. also limited to a PNP memorandum circular, mm -hmm. a command order, and mm -hmm. it can be scrapped by the next PNP mm -hmm. chief. But with this knowledge that you found, mm -hmm. um, how can we bridge this to legislation? Something that can last beyond one PNP mm -hmm. chief and uh, can actually chart the territory for the PNP mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. What are the next steps for concrete laws? Mm -hmm. Some things that last. Um, actually, in terms of the study, we really want to focus on um, strengthening human resources um, systems of PNP. So, in terms of what can be long-lasting, we see that, for example, if we're able to develop that competency-based um, training framework, mm -hmm. it's something that can be institutionalized in an administrative order, for example, mm -hmm. that will will be implemented even with changes in leadership um, and I guess hopefully um, now that General Archie is bound to retire in, in September it's yeah. something that will be able to ensure that the seeds for sustained reforms mm -hmm. are in place uh, when that change of leadership happens. Mm -hmm. And actually parang pinupush na rin to ng PNP right? Recently mm -hmm. nakuha na ng PNP yung Pagahandle sa PNPA, PA. right? Mm -mm. Before it wasn't there since mm -mm. PPSC. Yeah. So ngayon, they are recognizing mm -mm. that they have to train PNPA yes. cadets on their mm -mm. own. And in the academic consortium, mm -hmm. when we review educational programs, it definitely should include PNPA. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Okay. Originally, what I wanted to ask you is yung shattered public perception. But mm -hmm. I think a better question now to ask is for the public, what mm -hmm. can we do? to actually help out. I mean, I'm a media person, but yung mga tipo, typical people or mm -hmm. typical or people in our communities, if I'm in my community mm -hmm. and uh, we have cops, everybody has cops, mm -hmm. we have police stations near us, how can we help cops mm -hmm. become better cops for us and for everyone? Um, I think first and first of all is when we, what we found in the study is respect. Um, that's something that cops are generally, uh, that is a general sentiment of our cops that um, if they are treated with respect, I think it also goes both ways um, for them. Um, second um, is to be able to keep our police accountable. Right? So we, it doesn't have to mean that we have to agree with everything the police said, but to, to do continuous improvement we have to make them accountable for um, for areas that needs to be improved. Paano to gagawin? While respecting them. Well, there are there are ways naman to respectfully mm -hmm. disagree, di ba? Mm -hmm. Like ta tayo sa academia and media. Yeah, yeah. Um, and to foster that relationship. So I think it's really not just a burden of the public mm -hmm. to do that for the police, but it's also the the responsibility of obligation to the police to prove mm -hmm. that they're deserving or they have rebuilt public trust and confidence. So maybe um, to to end, PNP they have faced many criticisms, especially mm -hmm. in terms of corruption. Mm -hmm. So much so that trust ratings from the public is generally lower than that of the armed forces of the Philippines. Yes. And in recent um, and in, 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 in this administration, there are a lot of the allegations of abuse have surfaced in terms of how the police implemented the administration's anti illegal drugs campaign. So, in the recent SWS survey, we found that 
76% of Filipinos saw many human rights abuses in terms of the government's war on drugs and 78% believe that there are ninja cops. So here, there is really much work to be done and gaining public trust, rebuilding public trust and confidence is key to how they do collect effective policing. Mm -hmm. And and I think as this is a good start that they actually partnered with academe to give us unprecedented access, you know, to open up their their institution for critiquing mm -hmm. and that for us to identify what is strong and how can we address these things. Mm -hmm. And I guess moving forward, this this battle against corruption is one of the most crucial fights of the institution in years to come, mm -hmm. and they need not to do it alone. They really have to partner with more more organizations, mm -hmm. not just academia, but even religious sector for mm -hmm. their spiritual formation, even in the communities that they serve, also to get feedback for 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 how their operations go, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think now that we see that they're recalibrating and they're acknowledging that it, there, are, there are a lot of things that they have to reform from within, it is, it is a step in the right direction for us. And Ateneo School of Government supports that. Okay, thank you so much, Ariza Francisco mm -hmm. from the Ateneo Policy Center and the Ateneo School of Government. Yes. This okay. has been Rappler Talk. I am Ram Matalabong. Thank you for watching.